With aging, muscular power declines at a faster rate compared with muscular strength. Also, muscular power and not strength reflects more accurately the ability of older adults to perform functional tasks, such as the capacity to repeatedly get up from a chair. Therefore, as one ages, it's no surprise that low muscular power is associated with higher risk of falling, reduced quality of life, and poor functional performance. This highlights the importance of incorporating power-based activities in exercise programs for older adults. One method to improve lower body power is jump training. As a result, the effects of jumping exercise on muscular power in older adults was explored by Jason Moran and colleagues. In their meta-analysis, jump training was defined as lower body unilateral and bilateral bounds, jumps and hops that utilise a pre-stretch that uses the stretch shortening cycle. Studies were included in their analysis if they involved a jump training programme performed by healthy individuals aged 50 or above who were free from any musculoskeletal injuries or conditions that could restrict or impair their movement. The age 50 was selected as this is typically when age-related skeletal muscle loss, i.e. muscle atrophy, starts to happen. In the end, nine studies involving 275 individuals met the inclusion criteria and were included in their analysis. Out of the 275 individuals, only one injury, which was an ankle sprain, was reported due to training. Therefore, it was concluded that jump training is a safe and effective way of increasing muscular power in older adults. Based off the results, Moran and colleagues offer general recommendations for prescribing jump training for healthy older adults. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will provide a summary of their recommendations. Regarding duration and frequency, completing jump training over a 12-week period is likely to be more effective than shorter programmes. Having said that, after an introductory programme, it is recommended that older healthy adults perform jump training indefinitely. In terms of training frequency, completing up to three jump training sessions per week is recommended. However, the results of Moran and colleagues' analysis reveal overall training volume is likely to be more important factor to consider when programming in comparison to training frequency. Therefore, for a 12-week jump training program, it's recommended to place an upper limit of 300 jumps over the course of the program, as training volumes above this amount were found to be marginally less effective. This makes sense as there will be an upper limit above which adaptation to training and functional gains simply do not happen. To help ensure a varied jump training program, more than one jump exercise should be performed, completing two to three sets per exercise with 60 seconds recovery between sets. It's recommended to perform more than three jumps per set with the upper limit of 10 jumps per set being suggested. Increases in jump training volume to the upper limits of the recommendations should be a gradual and conservative process, ensuring technical proficiency is attained prior to any progression. Because different types of jumps elicit different levels of impact forces upon landing, certain exercises that produce high impact forces such as depth jumps and tuck jumps may be far less suitable than say box jumps and in place or submaximal jumps. For individuals being exposed to jump training for the first time, it's important to prescribe exercises appropriate to their movement capabilities and training history. With exercises only being progressed to more demanding jumps when technical competency is achieved and never if pain is present during any aspect of the movement. Interestingly, it appears jump training is more effective in non-obese individuals, which is classified as a BMI of less than 30. This does not mean, however, that obese individuals should completely avoid jump training. Rather, low-impact jumping activities can be prescribed, such as bunny hops and calf pushes, as well as box jumps, which by landing on an elevated platform in comparison to the ground, substantially reduces the impact force experienced. And that concludes the recommendations 
from prescribing jump training to develop lower body power in healthy older adults. It should be highlighted that if an individual has already developed any age-related health problems, these guidelines may not be suitable. As always, I recommend you go and check out the full article. The link is in the description. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.